Hello everybody and welcome to the part 3 of our C-Score V042 review. To access the VPN settings, you have to go here on the left to VPN and it already gives you a summary of the configuration. On the top, you have number of tunnels used and available, status of tunnels, and then down below you have the name you give to the tunnels, the status, a summary of the configuration, and here option to disconnect tunnels or change the configuration. Down below you have group VPN status, that's a way for you to create a single configuration for a number of clients, I never really got this to work. IPsec is very picky and uh, and the Windows XP 2000 client option also didn't work for me. You're gonna see that. On the bottom, you have VPN client status, and that's for the quick VPN Cisco clients. That is also crap, hasn't seen an update in years, and I didn't manage to get it working with anything newer than Windows XP. If you click here on the paper with a pencil, icon thing, you can see the settings of a tunnel, so let's do that. Top have name of the tunnel, what interface you are using, in the case you have a dual VPN router, then local and remote group setup, that's used uh, to authenticate the tunnel together with the shared key. Down below you have encryption settings for the IP sets keying process. You can choose different levels of security here uh, and it's a trade of uh, speed versus security. In my case, since I have very low bandwidth everywhere, it would not make a difference to use group two or group five. This is working fine as it is now so I'm not going to touch it. It was very difficult to get this to work. Of course, down here I hide my key. And if you go down below, you have advanced settings. Um, main or aggressive mode. Main is default. If you click aggressive, uh, it's a different negotiation method. Um, Payload compression, if both ends of the VPN antenna support it, you can use it. Keep alive, uh, gets the routers into a keep alive mode where one kind of pings the other and if the, there's no answer, the tunnel is down. Hash algorithm, well, we need to see the help to see what it does. We're gonna check it soon. NetBIOS broadcast lets you browse the computers, yeah, so uh, when you are on the network with a Windows machine, the broadcast that tells the network, hey, I'm a computer, I'm here, goes through, through the tunnel to the other end, so you can, you know, browse the other computer. Net traversal is if you have your VPN router behind net, that peer detection interval every 10 seconds checks if the other side is alive and not shows the difference again between keep alive. I did that configuration a long time ago. Tunnel backup, useless for me because it requires a fixed IP address, but in theory if your provider is down you can switch to another uh, WAN connection or another internet provider and have the service on. Split DNS, if you have a DNS server on the other end of the tunnel you can choose what domains, for example, secondhouse.com and every name with this suffix will be then forwarded to the DNS server that you put the IP here for name resolution. So let's check the help. The help in this device is very extensive and really useful to help you in any problem when you're doing the configuration. So here, well, 
basic settings so tunnel ID, tunnel name, the interface not a big deal local remote security gateway so this is how the authentication goes um, I'm using different options on each tunnel and when we are building our own configuration I'm gonna go through this carefully let's see what I wanted to check before yeah so when I was doing some configuration that requires netting and etc I try to use manual king mode but I've never managed to use to get the tunnels initiated in connection with manual king mode uh, and I went for the automatic configuration it was a struggle to get it working more than a year with a very unstable uh, environment down below advanced options yeah so here it explains the difference between main mode and aggressive mode It reduces the changes for a binary choice between security and speed but I'm quite sure there are more things involved if you need the information please go to Wikipedia yeah IP compression ah okay keep alive tries to reestablish the tunnel if it fails and I was actually having problems with this configuration because both ends of the tunnel would try to start a connection simultaneously and collide so I, I have it enabled only at one end and that is in my case the far end locations that have more unstable network or dynamic IP address so these are using keep alive Ah, hash uh, algorithm is using to confirm the integrity of the packets makes sense but I'm not using it oh that's it for settings let's see cancel this yeah that will be it let's see the rest Gateway to Gateway opens an assistance to create a new Gateway to Gateway tunnel. Client to Gateway opens the assistance to create a Client to Gateway tunnel. You end up in the same configuration screen I just showed. VPN Client Access is a way to manage the accounts for the quick VPN client. It is very crappy, very useless. I wish there was an update, but there is none. VPN pass through. Here, if I'm not mistaken, if you disable the options, people in your network will not be able to connect to external VPN providers. For example, I have my company provided EasyVPN Cisco router with a VoIP phone, and I think if I disable IPsec pass through, I would not be able to connect to my employer's network. Let's confirm here in the help. Yeah. That should be it. Yeah, to allow VPN clients on the LAN side of the router to reach the VPN server on the internet well, that should be it PPTP server this is a huge security hole and I really should disable it I'm working in disabling it I still rarely need it and as soon as I'm done with uh, an extra plan or not extra plan but a plan B for my very eventual VPN access requirement strong workstations then I will of course document it make a video and show the configuration how it's done and for the moment it stays actually it stays disabled because now that I'm showing it I should not have it there 
gone. And that's really it for the VPN configuration. Very simple, not very straightforward to get working, depends on many variables, but once it's there, it is, it just works. In my next video, I'm gonna summarize what I think about this specific router, and then we are gonna pick up another router in this series that I also have in the environment, go through it more briefly, probably, then we are going to create tunnels from different devices, compare the configuration and jump into the next step of our cloud building process that will be preparing you know, external names, domains for our network and start building from there. See you next time.